There we go. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a lot. All right. <laughs> Man, it can be tough. It can be tough. <laughs> I know me and Preacher was talking in the car the other day when we went to breakfast, and uh, we were talking about the attention span of most people. And uh, we talked about, you know, people probably average about 30 to 45 minutes when they start checking out. Um, so <coughs> don't worry. I would definitely hold you no longer than 45 minutes to an hour tonight. Okay? So, <laughs> so uh, go ahead and turn your Bibles to uh, John chapter 9. And as you're turning there, we'll go ahead and uh, give you a brief introduction. My title of my message tonight is uh, Perfect Vision. Perfect Vision. sure everyone in this room, except for maybe the smaller kids, knows what this is right here, right? Ah, there you go. <laughs> uh, 2020 is a vi vision, is a term used to express normal visual acuity. The clarity or sharpness of vision measured at a distance of 20 feet according to the American Optometric Association. Visual acuity of 2020 is considered perfect vision because no aids are required to see better, i.e., glasses or contacts. On the other hand, in the U.S., any person with vision that cannot be corrected to be better than 2200, that's the big E that you see up here, in the best eye or who has 20 degrees or less of visual field a.k.a. tunnel vision, remaining is considered legally blind. Tonight we're going to examine three types of people and assess their spiritual, vi their spiritual visual acuity found in John 9. Starting in John 9, verse 1, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, or his parent, excuse me, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation, sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore they said unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? Said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was, and there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they, asked him, and they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? 
Pilate answered them and said, We know the son, and that he was born blind. But what means he now seeth, for by what means he seeth, we know not. For who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He, said, he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, and ye did hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could not, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when they had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, For judgment, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees, Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for this day you've given us. We thank you so much for just blessing us tonight to all be here and not sick. And, Lord, just we ask now that you would just use just these few minutes um, to speak to us. I ask that you would help me to slow down to our that you have laid on my heart. And, Lord, that they may death is, but, Lord, that they fall on fertile ground. But, again, we importantly that if there's Savior, that most importantly of all, today will be salvation. In Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. The first group of people we're going to look at is the legally blind, the Pharisees and the unsaved. So the legally blind, Pharisees and the unsaved. First, the Pharisees. They were more focused on three things. One was the Sabbath day, what well, I like to title, Sabbath day tunnel vision which was John 9, 13 through 16. The Pharisees were so hung up on the fact that the Sabbath day had been violated that they couldn't accept the fact that a miracle had been performed. The second uh, tunnel vision that they had was discipleship tunnel vision, found in John 20, uh, 9, 28, verses 28 through 29. The Pharisees' hatred for Jesus Christ and his challenges toward their authority caused them to not realize that someone much greater than Moses was in their presence. And then third, they were all together blind. John 9, 40 to 41. The Pharisees asked Jesus if they were blind, not out of concern for their own soul, but as sarcasm. 
Jesus, knowing their hearts, answered them appropriately with regards to their stubbornness and stupidity. Quote, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. So that was a look at the Pharisees. Let's look at the unsaved, present day unsaved, those who don't know Christ as their Savior. As this world deteriorates, the unsaved continues to run after things that fill that empty spot in their hearts. They continue to worry and stress out over what is going on in the world. Their spiritual vision continues to be impaired because Satan keeps them distracted or preoccupied with more important things. Money, power, pleasure, etc. Might I suggest to you, though, that if you fall into this category, that you will remain spiritually blind until you receive Christ as your personal Savior? He's the only one. And I can prove that. We, those of us that was in uh, service this morning, preacher hit on it. But let's go back and look at it again from the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. Turn with me, please. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. I wrote a note outside of this uh, part of my Bible that says blind and lost. Because it says, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God, as Pastor said this morning, Satan of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Someone once said, to warn someone of eternal consequences, it's not judging them. It's loving them. Again, to warn someone of eternal consequences, it's not judging them. It's loving them. Again, here's a few love warnings from the, from the scripture. Romans 10, 10 through 13. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. That, that means God is not a respecter of persons. There is no difference at all between any of us. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the first group of people we looked at was the legally blind, and that encompassed the Pharisees and the unsaved. The second group of people we're going to look at is people with low vision, and that's going to be the disciples and the legalistically saved. So those who are saved, but maybe we sometimes we don't say legalistic. Sometimes we might just say, um, away from God, you know, they're saved, but they might be away from God. Back in our scripture, in uh, John chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? Born. Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of this world. Legalism. The disciples had the pleasure of walking with the Messiah daily. But this time, they seem to hone in on a legalistic perspective, this blind man, instead of continuing in faith. Why, you might ask yourself. Well, because it was common belief among the Jews at this time. 
of some great sin. Ask the question, who did sin? This man or his parents? See, the root of this sin that we just read in John 9, 1 through 5, was to teach about faith and to glorify God. We live in a far world, one that even sometimes believers' vision gets a little blurry. My own testimony. My vision got a, a little blurry this past April when my wife had to go home and take care of our daughter in an emergency. See, momentarily I took my eyes off of Christ, which caused me to waver in my faith a little. In that wavering, I began to focus on the loss and how their sin was causing problems in my life. When I finally grabbed some spiritual hygiene, the word of God, Okay, and as people to help wash my eyes out, then it was then that my vision cleared up, and I was able to realize that momentary situation, momentary, momentary, was actually a greater opportunity to live out my faith in a more powerful way. But even better than that, it was an opportunity that I could have missed to brag on my God and the power only he could give me to get through that storm. Fellow believers, life ain't fair. Nor have we been promised a life without trials and challenges. The difference for us now versus before we were saved is that we have the comforter. Reside, uh, we have the comforter residing in us, there to help us all along the way lose sight of what our true task is and the joy that comes along with fulfillment. So we looked at the legally blind, which was the Pharisees and the unsaved. We took another look at people with low vision, which were disciples and the legal legalistically saved or those that might have been away from God. Last but not least, we get to the title of the message, which is perfect vision. That encompasses the blind man and the saved and the faithful. Saved and faithful, as we say in the military, the fire and forget guys, you know. Give them a task and send them on their way. Number one, go. John 9, 6, verse 6 and verse 11. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the sky, anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now, verse 7. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He, the blind man, swayed therefore and washed and came seeing. Verse 11, he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. The blind man didn't ask any questions. He took Jesus at face value and went. And because of that, he received his sight. Believers, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, as we all know, is the great commission for us to, to, for us to go. Go. So take Jesus at face value and go. He promised that he has our back, but even better, the reward for our faithfulness. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Be bold. John, 9, John 9, 13 through 15, 26 through 27, and 33, 30, 30 through 33 all talk about the blind man wasn't afraid or shy about proclaiming 
how his sight was restored. The funny thing is, is he even challenged the Pharisees in verse 27. I love that. We got to look at that. He answered them, I told you already, and you did not hear. He was getting, fr- I'd say he's getting pretty frustrated right now, answering this question over and over again. Wherefore, would you hear it again? Now, here's the challenge. <laughs> Will you also be his disciples? He challenged the Pharisees, and then he turned and gave them a Bible lesson right after that. Verse 32, 34. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is? And yet he hath opened my eyes. Hear this now. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? See, they were pricked in their hearts. They got the Bible lesson. They knew right then. We must be bold in doing God's will for our lives, whether that be both vocationally as a missionary or a pastor, serving in the military or civil service, or out on the local economy. Why? Because all this stuff fades away. And the only thing that remains is what we have done for Christ. That's all that matters. Matthew 6, 19 through 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and dust where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Also, because we love him, Christ, that's why. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Be encouraged. John 9, 35 through 39. The blind man was kicked out of the synagogue, synagogue, and we read that in the very beginning. That's why his parents didn't uh, answer that question. I firmly believe to this day the parents wanted to believe that Jesus, that Jesus did something. They might have wanted to say something, but didn't have the courage because of the, with all the pressure that was on them. So they kept pawning it off on, on their son. Hey, he could talk for himself. He could talk for himself. But as we've already seen, there's a price to pay whenever you're going to stand for Christ. And in this instance right here, the blind man was kicked out of the synagogue, verse 34. We already read that. And they cast him out and was left all alone. (laughs) But here's the blessed part. Verse 35. Jesus found him and showed the blind man how he could know the comforter. There will be times we are living out our testimony for Christ that we may feel alone. Unlike Jesus having to come to the blind man, I'm talking to believers now, and showing him the comforter, we as believers have the comforter living within us. So when tough times come, just stop. Get alone with the comforter and ask him to resupply you with his strength and peace. Turn with me to John 14, verses 15 through 21, would you please? John 14, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. And it reads as follows. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, 
because I live. You shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Spirit lives inside of us to care for and to guide us. By faith, we can appropriate his power each day. We looked at the legally blind, the Pharisees and, and unsaved, the low vision, the disciples, and legalistically saved, and we looked at perfect vision, the blind man, and those saved people. Everyone wants perfect vision, right? I hear folks with vision problems tell me all the time to give them a moment to grab their glasses whenever I'm trying to show them something, especially on my phone. Back in 2012, when I was a TI, I had the privilege of undergoing PR, PRK surgery to correct my vision. So today, I need to have 2010 vision. That's all the way down here. Good day. Meaning I have a great perception of details at 20 feet, which most people would have to move up to 10 feet closer to get. According to the world standards, I have better than perfect vision. Tonight, we look at three types of visual acuity as it relates to spirituality. Again, the legal blindness, low vision, and the perfect vision. Which category best describes your vision tonight, Pastor? 